Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I will be doing my August Fab Pop. Let's get going. August was one of the dumbest months. It was ups and downs. I think I did pretty good, but I wish I had a little bit more of four stars, but let's get going. So my first book is A Shadow Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. So we have Alessandra who is tired of being overlooked, but she has a plan to gain power. Rule the Shadow King, marry him, and kill him, and take his kingdom for herself. Just by that premise, it sounds really, really good, but it felt flat. I gave it 2.5 to 3 stars. There was a lot of stuff that annoyed me. So, I did enjoy like the first half of the book, since I was intrigued by Alessandra, who was going to do her plan, but I felt like the plan was a little bit messy and we didn't get much world building so I felt like it was a little bit confusing at times because I didn't know where most of the locations were. The character was okay but the book had more of dialogue centered. Um, the mystery was not the greatest either. I was wondering how it would be solved but it was solved in like two pages, literally. The mystery was just solved in two pages and like seriously that's the best you can do. But um, I didn't really like the pacing that much. It was slow, but then got rushed at the same time. But um, yeah, so unfortunately I didn't really like this book that much. Uh, I think the storytelling could have been better, but I just didn't really like this one. And my next book is The Witch's Heart by Janela Gornich. So if I said it wrong. When a banished witch falls in love with the legendary trickster Loki, she missed the wrath of the gods and how hell came this, but it didn't really end this book. I gave it a 2 stars and I did not finish at 65%. It was so boring and honestly, the first chapter was like really quite uninteresting to be honest. It was a little bit blonde too. I knew like the relationship between Loki and Angela Border. I thought it could have been a little bit done better, but um, I also didn't really like the conversation at all, even though it did got better somewhat. Sometimes, I, but I feel like sometimes the author would drag out the conversation sometimes, which is not really necessary. I also don't like the pacing as it was slow and makes it impossible to push through the book. The characters would also be flat and the dialogue is also flat and does not Spice, not spice as in sexy romance, but something just to lift it up a bit more. So it didn't really have a nice flow. Um, the book seemed to have no plot since the first book was about just literally having character talking to more characters, and then later on we will find the same character in a cave by just talking more to other people, and that was all that was. So that kind of drove me a little bit crazy. I'm like. So that could have been done a lot more better. I was really disappointed because I wanted to read something about Loki, but this book just did not cut the chase and I was just really disappointed. And my next book is The Star Knows Thief by Chelsea Amadula. And this is like inspired by 1001 Nights where we have a tale of legendary smuggler, a commonly prince, and a dangerous quest across the desert to find a to find a leg legendary magical lab. I honestly kind of enjoyed this more. So it's like a 3.5 to 4 stars. I thought it was a pretty good book. The first half of the book was pretty good, even though the middle was a little bit dry too much. The characters in the world building was really interesting, but I think the author honestly did a good job when she did the world building because they didn't add so much stuff to it. I wish she had more details about the magic system as it was also kind of too vague so I didn't have a really clear picture as to what was really happening with the magic system. Uh, there were at times where things would get repetitive like showing a character being weak Oh my gosh, and then there's a Jin who's like showing some pep talk, like, yeah, you can do it, and then the camera's on like, yes, I got this, and then repeat. And so, a lot of pep talks throughout the book, I would say. And honestly, for an adult book, it reads like a YA, in all honesty, and I found some of the book to be kind of similar to City of Brass by S.A. Shankarbhati. 
and maybe just me, but I did find some, some similarities of this book and City of Glass, so that's fun. Um, and then there were some chapters that could have caught and gotten out just because some of them would be like the same thing, like someone getting possessed, and then she would have to fight them and then repeat. So there was like a lot of repetitors in the book, so that's why I kind of give it in the three sides because of that repetitors and it kind of just been handled better. And my next book is Atalanta by Jennifer Singh and we are, this is like a reimagining of the myth of Atalanta, a fierce huntress who was raised by the bears and on the only woman in the world's most famous band of heroes, the Argonauts. I love this. I gave it a four stars and honestly I think this is a better book of what Jennifer Singh had written. She had written Adrian, and like Ariana, and oh my gosh, Electra, which they were okay, but something was missing in those two books. Electra isn't about Electra, but rather the three of her sisters, so I don't know why it is called Electra if we're gonna talk about three of her sisters, so I don't know. But uh, honestly, I love this, and I think this was, as I said, one of the better books than, than Electra. There were like honestly really, really beautiful descriptions throughout the book, so I was enjoying them so much. And uh, again, the writing was honestly well done than the other two books, so I really liked this one better. However, there were some scenes that m were the moment, but then the author would just pull away. You know how you read something and you were in that moment, you were waiting for that moment to come? That's what happened in this book, and then the author just pulled out and was like, no, he had something going there. So I really wish he didn't do that. Ah. Uh, and then, but because of that pull, it just kind of made it a little bit harder for me to connect with the characters. And I thought the ending was pretty good, I was satisfied with the ending, and how it was, and how Saint had told it in her point of view, such as how the motherhood doesn't mean the end of an autonomy. I also like how Jennifer Stane had Antoinette to describe her troubles while being the only woman in the Argonauts. I thought that was also really well done. So honestly, I just really like how Jennifer Stane had built up Atlanta throughout the book. I thought that was also well done. So um, yeah, honestly, I really enjoyed this book and I'm giving Jennifer another chance because of this one, so it's a fun time. And my next book is Fairy Born by Claire Legrand, and we'll find two fiercely independent young women centuries apart who hold the power to save the world or do it. I was so annoyed with this book, I left at 74% and 2 stars. It was just so annoying. Like, Everything about it is just so annoying. I'm sorry. I didn't like anything in here, and I was surprised. I was on. I was honestly surprised I was able to push through by that much. I really wanted to finish, not finish it at all. But um, I was just kind of so confused with the two storylines, and I didn't even know they were actually separated. So that was kind of weird because I actually found out that there were two storylines until later in the book. And I'm just like, I was just so confused the entire time because it honestly felt like we were reading only one storyline. So that was fun. I felt like the author was honestly trying too much at the same time and just made it messy and choppy and not really well put out. There were so many things that didn't have balance. There were so many action scenes and then trial scenes, it was just too much all in one go. So that could have been balanced out. The moments, I hated the moments. I still don't know how they had chemistry. And they were too much of... I don't know if I can say it, because YouTube will demonetize me, but... Masturbation. Sorry, YouTube, I had to say it. They were honestly too much masturbation. Like, God. <laughs> so, and it just really wasn't necessary, to be honest. I'm here for sex positivity, but that was just too much. Like, holy crap. Call me a homeland. And honestly, and the plot is was just boring and just got dragged and it felt like, you know, we were just being told the same story by two different perspectives. So honestly, nothing much changes and the two point of views weren't really necessary, to be honest. 
And then my next book is 48 Clues into the Disappearance of My Sister by Joyce Carol Oates. Magdalene, a beautiful woman, has disappeared from a small town in upstate New York, but there's foul play involved. Or does she really take an opportunity to get away from fun or finally make the decision to leave behind her claustrophobic life of limited opportunities? So I gave this book two stars, and it was just really a weird book to be honest, especially the ending. We'll get to it later. So obviously I didn't like the book. The main character was also really annoying, but the one thing I did like was each of the chapter title it had a clue. I honestly thought that was unique and I have never seen that in any thriller. So honestly I thought that was pretty cool. So I should have paid more attention to it, but that's on me. So it's honestly such a cool idea. So this was more of a character driven than the plot, I would much rather have the mystery driven aspect. I feel as though no one honestly really did anything about the missing sister. They just honestly talked and that's it. Um, only like, like by talking they only talked about the weird relationship they all had with the family and that was the entire book of it. So like, so like is that really gonna care about the missing sister? What's going on here? And also, for the ending, uh, I was kind of a bit confused with the ending, but the author, but I feel like the author left it open on purpose and then it had a closure, that's how every, almost every thriller I had read had a closure, and it was honestly just like open, so I feel like she did that on purpose, so I don't really know how to feel about that, it could have been done better maybe. But um, yeah, I just feel like it was just out of place and I hated it in all honesty. The whole story was confusing and I just couldn't figure out what happened to the missing sister. Out of all the drama, I just didn't know what happened to the missing sister. I'm like, what happened to her? <laughs> My next book is Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. Emily's black when life changed forever, the night her best friend was found dead, and the love of her life, August Salt, was accused of murdering her. Years later, she is doing what her teenage self swore she never lived, living a quiet existence on the misty remote shores of St. Lawrence Island and running the family's business. Black woods tea, sharp air, herbal, tonics, and tea leaf readings. That's a mouthful. But when the island rooted in full color magic and begins to show signs of strange happenings, Emily knows that something is coming. The morning she wakes to find that every single tree on St. Lawrence has turned color in a single night. August returns for the first time in 14 years, an unnerved her past that the town has tried desperately to forget. Uh, it was another boring book, and my surprise, no. So there was also almost no magic, even though it said there will be magic. And, and then there was a mystery that I just didn't really care about it because everything was just drying out, and by like halfway, I would just finish with them, like, just give me the answer. And honestly, the only good thing that also annoyed me was that everyone kept having secrets. Everyone. So, you know what? Guess what? I have a secret too. I hated this book. <laughs> Shocker. Ta-da! It was honestly confusing, and I feel like the author was trying too much. The book had mystery, magical realism, and it just didn't work. I didn't get why Emily or August couldn't save the mystery instead of having, like, more perspectives added to the mystery it just made it all confusing and a mess everything was slow and the characters were immature in all honesty i couldn't handle their behavior and i didn't like emily so i couldn't and so because of the so many po uh, point of views it was just really confusing and i couldn't tell who was who because everyone was really so similar and i read this on an audio book so that's kind of the issue here, um, and, and honestly, the only thing that I really liked was the magical island, and the island was really nice. So, that's the only thing I really liked out of this book. And my next book is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Haddo. In 1893, there's no such thing as witches. They used to be in the wild, dark days before the burnings began. But now witching is nothing but any t tiny charms and nursery rhymes. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it in the ballot box. So I gave this 3.5 to 4 stars. I honestly really liked it. I did like the pacing for the first half of the book, but unfortunately I couldn't really connect with the characters. 
I honestly think Jennifer was okay. I mean, I love how the book can be serious, emotional, and intense moment. Regardless, there were some slow moments in the book which took me a little bit forever to get into. I just love the writing and the lyrical pause with unwanted inf and but sometimes it can get a little tedious with unwanted information. There was I honestly like how there were fairy tales included in this book. You know, like Rump Rumpuzzle and Rumpuzzle Skin. But I did uh, listen to this on an audiobook and when I was listening to it, like each time a chapter had a fairy tale story coming in, there was just music over the, narr the narrator's voice and that just felt a little bit distracting because I couldn't hear the voice of the narrator because the music would just overlap her voice. So that was a little distracting so I wish they hadn't done that. I really like this book. I thought the ending was satisfying. I thought Alex honestly did a good job about writing riches. So it's all good. So I did really like this book. But okay guys, so this is all the books I had read in August. They are audio books. And let me know what you have read in August. And please like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!